hi guys welcome back to my channel i hope you're doing well or if this is your first time tuning in then welcome my name is desreen and i share all things motherhood family fashion and lifestyle if you clicked on this video of course it's because you're interested to find out how i sleep trained my five month old baby um, maybe you want to sleep train your baby maybe you're just really tired and you're ready to sleep train your toddler because he's not he or she's not sleeping or you're pregnant and you kind of want to plan in advance like me um so i hope this video helps you in some way um firstly just a kind of a bit of a backstory i am a mum of two i have a six month old and a two year old as from tomorrow um and both of my boys are sleep trained they now sleep in the same room joel sleeps in the bunk bed and ruben sleeps in a cot and they are both sleeping through the night um, they go to bed around 7 o'clock, the latest would be 8 o'clock, so 7pm to 8pm and they wake up between 7am and 7.30 every day. So mama is mummy and daddy are very happy. How did this happen? It didn't just magically happen and this is what this video is for. Um, I do just want to say so first, I did, I sleep trained my firstborn by myself first just by kind of looking online whilst I was pregnant just to find out what method I could use. Um, I'll share that link um, here for you guys to click on if you would like to watch that one and try it yourself. Um, it was um, like I'm not professional I kind of just went online and tried a method and it worked for my son. The only thing with um, things like that is that it might not work for your child. Every child is different. Um, it is an overall kind of um, um, plan that is out there for anyone to use so you might prefer what I preferred this time around which is to get a sleep consultant um, because they kind of make a plan around your child their needs because um, every child is different I thought I would just say that so I sleep trained Joel and he's been a good sleeper ever since of course except the sleep regressions and all of that um, and then I had um, another baby and once I was pregnant I already said to myself the second time around I'm definitely gonna sleep train Reuben just as well just as Reuben was as Joel was trained because sleep is very very important in our house um with the work that my husband does and already having a baby another baby going on toddler i know that having some kind of routine when it comes to sleep would be so important for us so i decided to sleep train um reuben at five months i thought that was a good time just before he was about to start weaning and he was already at that time having lengthy sleeps um, sometimes he would even sleep all the way through he would have really lengthy sleeps really lengthy naps so I really wanted to really get into a good routine not just have some good nights and some not so great nights so I already knew he was capable of doing it so I really wanted to start it early so he, just as Joel did starting early just means that moving forward will just be a lot easier I'm a believer in you know your baby your children are born and they are like a blank canvas they learn they don't know anything they don't know what is good they don't know what's bad they don't know how to sleep for long they don't know how to feed they don't know you we teach them everything um so i was really keen to try and implement little things here that will help him when it comes to starting to sleep train so one of the things i put in place before we started sleep training when when he was a baby um i didn't rock him to sleep so I didn't rock him to sleep, I didn't pat him to sleep. Um, I would only just feed him, breastfeed him, and let him be get a little bit drowsy, and then I would put him down. Um, I wouldn't rock him, swing him, and do all of that stuff. Not because I didn't want to, but just because I knew that he would get dependent on that, and need that to be able to get him to sleep. I tried a dummy in the first few days, but Ruben just, refuse the dummy so that was easier because i didn't have to stop him i didn't have a dummy to kind of assist me to put him to sleep which would be harder to kind of take him off um but to note but to also add although i didn't rock him and hold him to sleep i did throughout the day so i made sure i had that skin to skin time that mum and baby moments holding him whilst we're just resting relaxing watching tv making sure that i'm still having that time to embrace him and hold him and bond with him but I just made sure that sleep time it wasn't the time for that and that he I wanted him to also get used to that knowing that during the day whilst you're awake you can say mommy's hands as long as you want 
you know, you have all of my attention, but I just didn't want him to relate that to sleep time. The second thing I did was not to put him in my bed. Now, this was really hard because with Joel, I didn't breastfeed, so it was kind of easier for me to just put him back in his bed after I fed him. But because I breastfeed, it was a lot more harder because you guys know, especially if you're a breastfeeding mum, that when you're feeding, it's so easy for you to just have them feed on you and lie down in the bed and sleep with them and fall asleep. And if you're tired and you see you waking up for the feeds, etc. It was hard, but I really put my foot down. Obviously, I had the next to me, not the next to me, but a snooze pod um, bed, which is, you know, right next to my bed, and the zip was down. So every time I'd feed him, I would just roll him back and put him in his bed, which really did take discipline. And I think the first thing I will say is if you do want your children to, um, if you do want to sleep train, I think the first thing is so important is to know that it does take discipline. And sometimes discipline is not easy. You, like you might think, Desreen, how did, like was it just easy? No, it wasn't easy. There were some nights I really wanted to hold him. I really just wanted to, but in the long run, I was just thinking in the long run, I would be happy that I'm doing this. And um, the next one would also have dad or whoever lives with you kind of understand the same things that you're putting in place. So um, I was exclusively feeling for some time, but then when we introduced the bottle um, formula, I also wanted James to do the same, so not hold him and rock him to sleep, kind of put him down, um, just so that everyone kind of knows what to do and that there's some kind of consistency. So before we started sleep training, Ruben was sleeping really well and all of these things were helping, so I kind of knew this would go well. I knew that it was going to be like, it was going to be good. It wasn't going to be as hard as I thought. So I connected with Rebecca from Sleepy Time Sleep um, and she's a sleep consultant and I actually got connected to her I think when I was pregnant with Ruben and I said of course like I'd love to collaborate with you um, to sleep train Ruben when he's around five months so we kind of we were connected before he was born. So then I reached out and I was like, I'm ready, I'm, it's time, I'm ready to sleep train Ruben. So um, I'm going to first talk to you about like the whole process and things like that then the plan that was specific for him and then after so first of all before I even go into like all the details the first thing to have in mind is that when you know using Rebecca or a sleep consultant what I love the most about it and I actually wish I did it for the first time for my son is that um every sleep plan is specific for the child um every baby is different every child is different every toddler is different every one of them they weigh differently they eat differently they eat different amounts they drink different amounts um they are born in different dates their households are different their routines are different their rooms are different there's so many different factors um for every child which is why a sleep, I would definitely recommend a sleep consultant because they would create a sleep plan that is suitable and perfect for your baby. And I think that is why it was so smooth because everything was like the sleep plan and everything that was put in place was specifically for Ruben. So what happens first with Rebecca? Um, so first she would she sent me a survey and a questionnaire, which I really liked because I thought... I was thinking, how how does this work? You know, she's gonna give me advice and tips on how to sleep train. But I loved that we start off first with the question of the survey because on there has detailed questions about your baby, about their sleep, their current sleep time, when they sleep, how they nap, how to how you put them down. Do they need a suva? Do they need a dummy? Do they need a blanket? How long are they roughly sleeping for already? Um, is there anything else I need to know? What times do they eat? What times do they drink? Are they fussy? Like all of the information, how much they weigh, everything. It's just so good because before she creates a plan for your baby, she likes to know absolutely everything. And it makes sense, of course, because the plan has to be suitable for your child. Because let's say she, the same plan was given for every child. It might not work. It might work for my son. It might not work for another person's child. It might work for another child. It might not work for mine. And I think that's what I love the most about it. So once going through the survey, the questionnaire, she obviously kind of gets a really good idea of, of how Ruben is, um, what he also likes, what he doesn't like and things like that. So the next stage was then to have a Zoom call and to talk about, go through the plan that she had kind of prepared. So 
Um, in your first call, she would have, what she'll have for you is a sleep plan for your baby. And she'll also go through a sleep um, spreadsheet, like that you kind of put all your times in, but we'll, talk, we'll touch on that shortly. So the sleep plan will obviously have an introduction, an overall introduction, and from um, the survey, I will also let her know what is it that I want from this. Some people would say that they want the baby to be able to sleep through the night some will say they want them to depends on their age to sleep independently in their own cot some would say they want to be able to transition them into a bed some may say that they maybe they're younger they're still in their room but they just want them to be able to go down by themselves and self-soothe so it really does depend on what you want for your child after discussing what i wanted we had three goals um so the first goal was to help reuben to learn how to self-soothe now like i said he was sleeping he was fine but i found that he was always kind of like a little bit sleepy from the feed and then I would put him down. He wasn't fully sleepy, he was like almost going down. But I wanted to get to the point that I could literally, he could be wide awake like just now. It's so funny because I was just vlogging and you'll see wide awake and I just put him down, close the door and he's able to sleep. That's what I wanted because that would be convenient for me and us and our family and the fact that I also have a toddler. It's just something that I wanted. I also wanted him to Ruben to sleep um for longer. So his his bedtimes were good, although they could sleep longer. So of course I wanted him to be able to sleep through the night. And I also wanted his nap time to be a lot more longer. And the last one was to help um help Ruben with a restful, restorative nap time. So with nap time, sometimes he'll have good naps, sometimes he wouldn't. It was it was kind of just a bit up and down. So those are the three goals that I had. Then there's an overall introduction, the sleep plan approach. So she explains everything there. And then she also, there's just like little notes here and there. Um, I won't go through everything specifically because like I said, it's different, differs per child. What you'll get first is like basic information, which is really helpful. So at five months, um, an average awake time for Ruben's age um, is around two point two and a half hours. So from his last week, whenever he wakes up, his average awake time is 2.5 hours. And his average um, amount of sleep required for the day is 14 to 16 hours. So that's always good to know because sometimes I find that um, if you're a first time mum, or even if you're a second time mum, sometimes you don't really know the amount of hours and what the baby should be getting and not getting. So that was really helpful to start with. So um we got a schedule so i'm going to start by just going going through with you guys the schedule i'm going to try and not make this video long okay i'm going to try and make it just point by point so the first thing we've got the sleeper time sleep routine and this was the schedule that then for the nap times okay so at five months ruben she said that ruben should be having three naps a day so and this is how it would go so he would wake up around 7 a.m be up for 10 minutes and then he would have a bottle and then he would play yeah, so he'd wake up, feed him, um, play, but then also feeding him, not in our room, in the kitchen or in the lounge area so that he doesn't, um, what's that term? So he doesn't associate um, feeding um, with being in the room or bedtime because it's in the room, it's a little bit dark. So she always said that you have to feed them in light, like out of the room, out somewhere else. So they kind of get used to like that wake up. So 7 a.m., wake up after 10 minutes feed awake for two and a half hours so awake after two hours two and a half hours then begin the nap the first nap of the day so this was the first like wow for me because i always kind of learned that before just before baby sleep you should feed them and then put them down but actually um and this is why it's so important to get someone that knows what they're doing and you know it's i learned so much along the journey and this is one thing that i learned um that when you do that it's not a problem it's not wrong because that's what i did with joelle um but you can find that sometimes if you feed them before bedtime they will then associate having to feed before sleeping rather than just just being able to confidently put themselves to sleep if that makes sense so let's say like every time before bedtime i would give him a bottle and then i put him down he would always expect that bottle but i wanted to get to the point with my child that i wanted just to be able to put him down to sleep and he was going to sleep put him down without having to breastfeed him breastfeeding and then put him down i think that was the main thing because i was still um was i exclusively breastfeeding no i was still feeding but predominantly breast milk i would say about 80 percent. i was still breastfeeding him so i didn't want him to feed on the boob and then know that it's bedtime and then go to bed i want him to feed on the boob to get full just to get full 
and not confuse that with comfort comfort feeding or com feeding to sleep does that make sense i hope it does so in order to kind of avoid that and to also make sure your child was full you would feed them before the nap um during the time that they are still full enough to be able to sleep on that feed does that make sense wake up feed him after two and a half hours i would then put him down for his sleep so after that two and a half hours he's still full from the feed and he will still be able to have a good nap um during that time because he's already full so put him down um two and a half after two and a half two and a half hours and when he wakes up again after two and a half um after his nap then i feed him again after 10 minutes and then play time for the rest of the time and then when two and a half hours come again i do the same thing so three naps during the day after two and a half hours so two hours after that last nap i would begin i would give him a feed and then i would start um the bedtime routine half an hour after that feed does that make sense so then bath time would be between 6 and 8 p.m so you might think why 6 p.m it depends because it depends on the time that he would have woken up in the morning but we'll go through that what is really good um working with rebecca is that she doesn't just give you like the schedule and the plan or just have it in mind like now currently she had in mind that ruben will be turning six months and then seven months so she also kind of gave me a rough plan for that as well and that um, when the six to seven months it goes down to two months two two naps a day and um the wake window is now um about it's that similar time two and a half two hours and 15 minutes but they just require they don't require the three naps and i can say ruben's six months and it's accurate and it's just he's moved so perfectly to the next kind of schedule if that if that makes sense so it's been very very helpful also having in mind that they're feeding now so the nap times will change. Then I received an overall bedtime routine. So what the bedtime routine would be milk. So you feed them, you keep them wide awake. So you feed them first at the beginning of your bedtime routine. Then you give them a bath and massage if you like. Then you put them in a sleep suit or their vest. Story time, song time, whatever you prefer to do. Then um, you put them in a sleepy bag. You close the blind to make the room nice and dark and then you can put the white noise on. We sleep we sleep trained to him with the white noise as she advised. And then you put them in a cot and then you turn off the light. Um, so that's like the rough bedtime routine that I was doing whilst I had sleep trained and which we do now. And she also added a note, an early bedtime will help Ruben get the hours of sleep that he needs each night. Make sure that the bedtime routine is the same every night and no longer than 30 to 40 minutes. So I don't know if I said it already, but the sleep plan that we had was 10 days straight. So for those 10 days, I was told to not plan anything. Don't plan anything. Don't plan to leave the house. Don't plan to do any activities just stay at home because consistency is key with babies and at first i was like oh my gosh i'm gonna have to stay at home for 10 days i can't really do much and things like that but it makes so much sense because i was it wasn't just the bedtime that we were working on we wanted to make sure that we get him into a good nap routine as well which meant that i had to be at home for every single nap because if I'm out the house he might fall asleep in the push chair the times might change then I've got Joelle to deal with all of this and stuff so for 10 days I committed to this routine so if you're serious it takes commitment okay so here I will share with you um our sleep plan but again I have to reiterate re reiterate re reiterate I think that's the word I have to say it again that this sleep plan may not be the same for your child even if he was the same age as Ruben at five months because every child is different and the sleep plan will be um, designed to cater to your specific child their age the amount of times they feed their weight their age um, their situation where they're sleeping all of those things okay I do just have to know that I think a week or two weeks before I started the um, sleep training, I actually did put Ruben in his cot in Joelle's room, but she advised me to sleep train him in our room again, so I had to bring him back in our room because obviously sleep training means that sometimes he will cry and we didn't want to disturb Joelle's sleep. So we kind of wanted to sleep train him in our room and then once he sleep trained him, move him into him in his brother's room, which we have done now. 
So let's get on to our sleep plan and how, what worked for us. This is for the night. This was the bedtime. So I went through the naps earlier with like the two and a half hours and things like that. That was the nap time during the day. So that was the plan. That's what I had to stick to for 10 days. Now this is the bedtime, which was, I feel like, like the most important. Not most important because nap time is also important, but yeah. So for, the, for night one to three, for the first night to the third night, I had to bring in a chair in the room and sit beside the cot. Okay, and I would give him verbal reassurance. So I had to give him verbal reassurance, repeating um, the key phrase, shushing key phrases like, you know, good night, baby, you're going to be fine, you're going to go to sleep now, um, shushing him, humming him, and talking to him softly whilst I put him down to sleep. If he needed physical touch, if he was really upset or crying, then I can pat him on his tummy or his back with a semi firm touch for one minute, stop. For two minutes and then repeat um and then if you're if my touch did make Ruben cry she also advised to, to maybe don't do that <laughs> just use words um and then yeah there's a few more notes and um don't pick him up the main thing is to not pick them up the main thing is for you to be beside them so that they know you're there so you're giving them the verbal and the physical reassurance whilst you're next next to them so that's day one, night one to three. Then night four to five is then you move, I moved my chair to the middle of the room. And so which obviously is less interaction. So the verbal reassurance this time was just using those key phrases that I would use for him, shushing him and humming him from, from for 10 to 20 seconds every two minutes. And physical reassurance would just be the pat on the tummy for one minute, stop for three to four minutes and then repeat. Night seven to nine would then be move my chair to the door and just stay in my chair. That was it. And then night 10, um, kiss Ruben goodnight, um, say my key phrases to him, goodnight, I love him, sing, there's like a bedtime song that we both sing to him and leave him in the room, close the door. If he cries longer than five to 10 minutes, then go back in for 30 seconds, provide verbal and physical assurance, then repeat it for every five minutes. That was the overall plan that we had. Now you might think, oh my gosh, there's so much to remember. But what's so amazing as well, what we got from her is um, you also get a sleep sleep um, spreadsheet. So let me open mine now. Uh, a sleep train spreadsheet to log down all of the times, all of the nap times, all of the notes, all of that kind of stuff. So um, the sleep time, sleep log, um, I would have to note down um it was kind of like let me kind of show let me show you okay you probably can't see it so it's google docs and um you'd have for ruben of course he was had he had three naps so it had like the date um and then it would have like the morning um section where you put each time that you woke up every morning first nap second nap third nap and in those um categories it would, it would have the time that you put him in the cot the time that he fell asleep the time that he woke up and then it would calculate the duration and each one would also have a note so you can add notes as what you needed to do let's say you had to shush him rub him on the back and things like that um and then you would also then there would be the bedtime so what time do you put them in the bed have what time they fell asleep what time did they wake up if they woke up for any feeds etc etc and notes so having that was very very helpful because it meant that for the whole 10 days I could log everything it also made it easier for me to remember what time he woke up so I know okay it's two and a half hours from this time that he needs to be sleeping by and also um it just meant that I could track each day how he was improving and also on the sleep log there's just like a graph a sleep graph that kind of is created from the information that's been inputted on the sleep log to kind of see how he's doing and guys, Ruben did so, 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 so well. Um, what was so good is that we got, I got check-ins from her on WhatsApp. We got voice notes. If I had any questions, any doubts, any time of the day, I can ask her. There were times that, for example, I expected him to have a two and a half hour nap um, or two hour nap, but then he'd wake up after an hour. Then I'm like, is he supposed to wake up? Should I just put him back down or should I keep him awake? You know, I was just not sure about things. So it was always good because she was there. Um, so um, let me give you an example of, one of the days oh i don't think i can access it now i can see one part so let's say he woke up at six he woke up at 6 30 but i took him out of his bed at 6 36 so the first nap let's say was at 9 30 
I put him into bed at 9.30 but he fell asleep at 9.34. Let's say he woke up at 11, so that's one hour and 26 minutes. And then I would put down what I had to do. So let's say I had to hush him or shush him or pat him on the back and then kind of just fill out the rest of the naps. And then the bedtime was basically the same. So I, like I said, we were committed to doing this properly. So there were no days when I was kind of, I slipped up or I didn't do it. I just followed her instructions. So day one came and I'm not going to go through obviously each day. It's kind of just an overall of um, how my my journey was using sleep consultant and the benefits of it and the outcome. So like I said, it was 10 days. So for the 10 days I was at home with the boys, I have Joel and I have Ruben. Um, I made sure that I was sleep training him in our room, which meant that Joel could still get his nap times. And I made sure I stuck to the two and a half hour wake window with Reuben and made sure that I put him down to sleep after those two and a half hours. But to also note, which is one thing I was struggling with, she said that he has to be asleep within two and a half hours. And I found that sometimes I was kind of putting him in bed at two and a half hours or um kind of getting ready because i just found that the day was going by so fast i'm like oh my gosh it's already bedtime by the time i put him down sometimes it'd be two and a half hours sometimes three hours that he's been awake for until he's actually sleeping so rebecca advised me to start bedtime start the nap times at like maybe two hours or two hours and 15 minutes to make sure he's sleeping by two and a half hours um so yeah logging down the times was so important because then you kind of know yeah this is the time to put him back down and sometimes putting an alarm on if you have to put an alarm on to help then that will help so overall using the sleep log and the 10 nights for my son reuben was so so smooth i feel like we had two nights that he cried for longer than um I, than he was for the other nights but from the day that we started sleep training him, I feel like the sleep, um, the times that it was taken for him to sleep was about um, 10 minutes. Um, that was at like the average time, five to ten, like 10 minutes, sometimes 15 minutes. It just depended in the beginning. But towards that, from that the middle to the end, within minutes, Ruben was literally falling asleep. So it worked quite quickly. Um, bedtimes he then went from um having like two feeds to one feed so during the whole process of following the sleep plan he would wake up for one feed um and i feel like a couple of nights he slept all the way through so the sleep plan worked worked really really well for my son specifically i didn't get a lot of crying i didn't get a lot of screaming i didn't get any of that i didn't there were a lot of times i just stayed on the chair and followed it sometimes obviously when they're crying you do feel a little bit like your heart just kind of melts but you know that he's going to go to sleep then i found that there was like a cap time i don't know if it was just with my son but after like seven minutes or he would cry for like seven or nine minutes and once they hit that seven to nine minutes he would just stop crying and he would go to sleep and that was it all the time so it wasn't always like a crying for seven to nine minutes so sometimes it was just moaning like for seven to nine minutes then he would stop then like towards the end of the week i would put him down and within minutes he would go to sleep so this was at nap times and bedtimes so with this specific plan that i had with reuben and knowing the times that she said that i needed to feed him the way the bedtime routines the way that i had to you know do the same thing by turning off the lights closing the blinds putting him in a sleep bag he began to know that it was bedtime when i put him in a sleep bag he knows it's bedtime because he can feel the comfort of it and he always touches it like he knows it's bedtime when it gets dark it's like he kind of calms his body calms a little bit more because he knows it's it's bedtime so sticking to these little things it's like he started to know it's time to sleep by the end of the 10 night, 10 day plan, he was fully, fully self-soothing and fully putting himself to sleep, even before the 10 nights. So now after it has been, he's now six months old. And as Rebecca said, he would move to two, um, two sleeps a day, two naps during a day, and he will sleep for the night. That is exactly what has happened. So I cannot be any happier with the results of using Rebecca and using Sleepy Time Sleep because 
from the advice about the feeding, the times to feed, um, the techniques of, you know, um, repeating the same thing, you know, putting him in, in bed, putting him, no, putting the sleep bag on, closing the blinds, doing those little things and they start to recognise that when this is happening, I know it's bedtime. You're not feeding them before I put him down. So it means that he can just go to sleep when it's time to go to sleep. The other day he went to grandma's house and it was his first time since being sleep trained staying there. I told her, give him about an hour before and when it's bedtime, put him down on his bed. She didn't have the sleep bag and he, she left the room and he fell asleep. So it has just been the best thing ever. And then the transition, um, she also advised me how to kind of transition him into the bedroom. That worked perfectly fine. So now I have two babies who are sleeping independently in their own room which means mommy and daddy can get enough sleep or we can just enjoy our time watching Netflix chilling having popcorn having dinner ordering Nando's having date night indoors um, it's just the best thing um, and I can either do my work I can stay up editing I can stay up shooting content I could go out with my friends like I have been doing so and that's been such that for me has been really helpful as well because um if James goes out or if I go out, I know that James could just stick to the same routine, do bedtime, um, put them down and they're both sleeping. So I know that I'm out and James is just relaxed and having some time by himself while the kids are sleeping. So guys, I cannot recommend Rebecca enough. I will leave all of her details below so you can contact her. Um, if you are struggling with sleep, if you're, you're not sleeping, your baby's not sleeping or your toddler's not sleeping and you need advice, she can help from any age that any amount of children she can give you the perfect advice that is catered for your family personally and for your child i would 100 percent recommend it and i find that our household is just happier and calmer and better now that there's structure and routine the kids know what's coming they're having enough sleep we're having enough sleep it's just the best thing ever i hope this video helped you if you've got any more questions then leave them below in the comments for me and i'll leave all of her details below and i'll see you in my next video bye